All right, I'm in the mood to do another one like this painting. This one here, which is kind of a, uh, it's very rough. It's really not refined. It has lots of uh, chunky areas. And uh, I think I want to do one like this with less, less of a big black bottom part. And I really like uh, more of a, like a serene lake, but keep some of these swirly lines and shit. So I'm thinking serene lake. So I'm going to start by fixing my camera. All right, that's good enough. And I already have some, this is a 16 by 20, I think. I'm gonna get some red, and red is a nice, ooh, this is a really nice red. Maybe I'll put some blue, orange in there too, just for fun. And maybe even, what is this? Skin color, look how red that is. Okay. <clears throat> I don't wanna go too wet. Oh, I don't like that little dent in the corner, damn it. Maybe I have to twist those little things in the back. This is one of those canvases that have these. I've never seen these before. These automatic twist things for tightening up the cat. So maybe if I twist it, it'll hopefully it'll straighten out that kink. Okay, so yeah. Let's see how fast I can do this. Let's see if I can pump this mf -er out. So in my mind, I see this very simple. Oh, look, there's a bit of blue there. Hello, blue. Are you joining us? It's kind of good to have a little bit of mistakes when you when you do the underwash, because I don't like perfection. I don't want it to be all. Sometimes these mistakes they guide me. They uh. One day, maybe I'll, I'll use photographs after I've proved to myself, after a few thousand paintings, once I've proved to myself I don't need photographs, I might use photographs. Because you know what? Nature is like the ultimate, um, nature is the ultimate, like, uh, fuck, not teacher, but like, you know, all the fractal universe, the, the Fibonacci patterns that you find in like trees and branches and stuff. I mean, that's that's beautiful. So find you know using nature as the guide. That's what I'm trying to say. Is really a good approach, but I feel like I I have I haven't earned it yet. I've got I don't know. You know what it is? It's like people who go straight to, to abstract painting. There is a kind of a unwritten rule. At least the way I see it, is that before you can do an abstract paint, you've got to prove that you can actually paint. Because otherwise, you're just putting random shit down. It's kind of like what may allowed uh, what's his face Picasso to get away with the stuff he was doing. And so he proved himself as a as a talented painter, like competent painter. He wasn't even that good, to be honest. Before he went all expressionist and goofy, because. Believe me, yeah, I mean, his stuff was goofy. There's no questions Picasso's work was, some of it was just stupid, silly bullshit. Okay, so here we have, like, uh, these hills, duh, the hills are alive, and the sound of music, and then, am I going to, am I gonna have, am, are you gonna, let me, where's that painting? <coughs> I can make it so that, maybe I'll just do it where they, you don't even, can't even see where they're they're coming from. They're just sort of and maybe what I'll do is I'll do some 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 white. Oh, I don't like that that movement of that tree. You got you always have to do one that kind of like falls across. You know, here's the one that that falls across, <laughs> and it's got all oh, these sad branches coming down. Oh, look at the poor sad branches. These sad branches. 
And then maybe some looping up. Oh, like this. Oh, here's a thicker one. Oh my god, look at that. Oh, okay. Here's another. <coughs> You know, well, something like this. Who knows what the fuck I'm doing, right? Just, just and then maybe have some curves. Oh, these are ridiculous. Look at these. Look at these curves. Who do? I just, I don't even know what I'm doing. Okay. Wow. What the fuck? Okay. So we got this crazy ass son of a bitch motherfucker <sighs> composition here. We got this composition. Do we like it? It is what it is, and it's gonna be just that. Okay. Do I want to do birches right on top of it? Nah, let's just do this. Or should I add some, some complex... Stupid cables in the way. Maybe I should add some kind of complex... Little uh, branches that are just flying off. Maybe there's another one over here. Okay, so <laughs> I thought it was going to be <laughs> a very simple, serene idea, but suddenly it became this mad, tangled mess of of who knows what this stuff is. All right. And maybe these are like leaves that are coming down. Okay, so we have this Crazy bullshit. Okay, now, I guess I can have some fun now. First, I need some more Diet Pepsi. Alrighty then. Problem, I can tell you right now, the painting is very wet. Okay, so all I have to do is think about the source of light. You know what? Screw it. I'm not even going to think about it. I'm going to go into just painting mode and see what happens. Okay, I do want to dark to light or light to dark. First, let's, let's get some of these met. Ooh, that's kind of a very silly green. It's going to be because it's all wet. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I forgot to <coughs> draw the <coughs> draw the line of the um the mountains behind like that. It's probably good enough. Okay. Maybe 
bit more yellow green. Still so wet. Okay. Well, I really need a thinner brush to do a better job. Let's do the aqua da water. Water. Hmm. I need to look at a lake, to be honest. I need to look at a picture of a lake. Just, I'm just going to type in the word lake. L-A-K-E, lake. And I need to know, should I do the water, the, the lightness at the top or the bottom? Uh, okay. Yeah, lightness goes at the top. Hmm, well, if there, actually, no. Yeah, okay. Lightness will go at the top. Darkness at the bottom, closing that. Up. Okay. Lightness at the top, darkness at the bottom. Now I know this is kind of a green color. And there ain't nothing wrong with green. But what I really want is blue. I want the blue, 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 blue. Blue, 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 blue. Need to switch size of brushes. Yeah, I need to switch brushes to something a bit yeah, flat. Square brush would be good. Yeah, this will give you a bit more control. Is this a tree going up there? I don't guess it is. I should have drawn like a blue. So maybe this is as dark as it gets. Let me get some white. Let's try throwing in some other. I shouldn't have drawn these lines in blue because because that's not smart. <clears throat> and uh, up here, yeah, up here, just need to reach and add more, more yellow. I think it's
<coughs> Excuse me, for this coffee. I shouldn't have drawn with blue, that was so silly. I like how uh, this one guy sent a message said, oh, I was just there. <laughs> and uh, the funny thing is I just made these, I just make these places up. Like they don't actually exist anywhere. He's like, I was just there. I was, I was walking in the rain. Oh, the guy could be crazy and just like talking shit or whatever, but it was kind of fun. To, Okay. Oops. Okay. What kind of sky should I make? I'm thinking orangey white. Yeah, orangey white. Maybe. I don't light blue on the sky I mean um light blue on the the mountains back here so it's like atmosphere perspective Wait, where is that blue? Where did I get it? Here?
too bright. And then up here, <clears throat> it's going to be an orange, white, orange and white sky. No, excuse me, yellow, orange. And white. I need white. Brown. Here's white. White, white here. White there. White there. It's always good to have little areas of white. <clears throat> so, what I'm thinking is nice, fun, thick. Globules of goodness, yellows and oranges and stuff like that. And this one, yeah, I think the light is going to be uniformly across. Maybe I won't do like a a bright spot in just one spot. Bright spot, just one spot. Maybe I'll just sort of evenly place them across.
take a look at this upside down painting, see what's done. It's, it's very colorful. It's very, it's like a, what's that uh, morso? It's a bit of a morso, isn't it? Morso is a native Indian Canadian painter who are way, 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 way overhyped. <clears throat> the paintings were average at best. It's just my opinion. Just doing a bunch of like shapes and it's like finger painting. No, I paint by numbers almost. Ah, that's just how I feel about it. But then again, only like about there's only probably about fifteen artists that I actually even like it. So that's just that's just that. That is just that. Okay, so we're gonna do a bit more of this finger painting stuff, and then we'll get into the get into the blues, and we'll get into the all the nice things that make up this painting, and then we're gonna be done. We're gonna be done so fast. We're gonna be done like dinner. <clears throat> <sighs> All right. <clears throat> when I was, uh, I want to say 19 or so, I got myself a part-time job in a factory doing soapstone carvings. You wore a mask and you had this like drill thing and uh, you had the soap, soapstone and it was an abomination I w I got really good at it basically it was soapstone's carvings of these like native Indian native Inuit what, what is Inuit is that the right word I don't know for native Canadians who live up north Inuit indigenous I don't know who the fuck they're very called <clears throat> they're like beavers and fucking uh, I can't remember what other animals anyway I had to carve them out of soapstone Dust is falling everywhere, and then I had to sign them Dano with my the signature, and they were sold at places like uh, Niagara Falls, and they said you know they were like Native Indian or whatever Inuit sculptures. What a ripoff, eh? And uh, the 
paid shit, and but it paid by the piece, I think. But I got really good at. It. I was like, there's about four carvers, and I was by far the best one. I didn't take, wasn't take much to, to figure it out. But after a while, it wasn't really worth the money because I had to drive like an hour to get there, and it didn't pay much. I was totally broke, and uh, I only stayed about two months, probably. Stopestone Creations or something like that. Anyhow, it was such a ripoff. So all those people at like Niagara Falls were buying these like supposed Canadian, authentic Canadian soapstone carvings were done by a bunch of people in like a sweatshop in Mississauga. <laughs> uh, yeah, so there's probably a, quite a few hundred people out there that own sculptures that I did. And they were signed Dano, D-A-N-O. I don't even know who the hell Dano was. Kind of embarrassing. What a ripoff. <clears throat> and you know what? I was really good at it. And like the guy who owned the place, he just didn't care. He was all about like the numbers. Like I was trying to do really good quality, like set, like, you know, you had a, I can't remember what the tool was. I think there were two tools. I think there was one for rough and then one for fine lines. But I just remember you had to wear a mask because the stuff was like spraying everywhere. I was probably getting like fucking black lung from that place. <laughs> but uh, the guy who ran it didn't give a shit. He just cared how many we could produce. And they, and they weren't totally awful. I wonder if they're still in business. They shouldn't be. Because it was such a joke. I guess that's why I don't have a lot of respect for the some of the native Canadian art. Because it's very, very formulaic. It's like once you've seen one, anybody could do it. You know, I think my parents had a, had a I think had a more so... At the cottage, or my grandparents did, or somebody had it more. So, oh no, no, no! My uh, here's a cool story. I should be super rich. My grandmother, my grandfather died. He was a cool guy. I never met him. He's a tank commander. I used to, or some sort. He was a lieutenant colonel, or I think I don't remember his rank, but he used to teach Canadians to drive tanks. Never met him. He died way before he was born. Anyhow, so my grandmother remarried this super rich dude like crazy rich their house was on the owners of roots the owners you know roots the store bought the house from her and i remember when i was a kid i used to go here i'll just tell the story real quick i used to go where's the front they had this mansion and the back was like french gardens almost like a maze and uh they had all this very, very expensive art. We're talking like Picasso's and Gauguin's, like real fucking expensive shit. In fact, there was one statue of his torso of a woman with just breasts and no head that I used to run up the stairs and always grab the boobs, you know, like what else am I? I'm a little 15, 14 year old, 13 year old kid. I was, you know, doing that stuff. Anyhow, it sat, it was donated, the, the, I won't say his last name, who my, my grandmother married, but they donated it to the Art Gallery of Ontario. And it was at the entrance of the Art Gallery of Ontario for like a decade, the statue that I used to run up and, and touch. And I remember I was going to like, can I touch it? Like it, it was basically mine. It was my family's. And they gave it all away. So anyway, my story was my grandmother was set to inherit a shit ton of money and she didn't accept it because she didn't want people to think that she married the guy for his money. So we should have been super, super, super rich. When my grandmother was too, I don't know if it was pride or whatever it was. but So I grew up around a lot of wealth that was never ours. And they had, yeah, so they had a bunch of, like they had um, group of, uh, yeah, group of sevens for sure. But they had the, the 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 Canadian, what's his name, more so, and I forget the other famous Canadian Indian dude. And I would just look at it, and I'd look at the, I look at the Picasso, and I, or Gauguin, or whatever it was. And I look at the the Morso, and I go, dude, this is like done with acrylic, and it was like 
just a bunch of fucking lock. It, just, it was it was it felt cheap. I'm sorry, I can't help it. it. Felt cheap. It didn't feel masterful at all. Sorry, sorry. Probably piss off a lot of people, but I was there. I would touch these paintings. I think that's why I feel so intimate with some famous artwork is because I got a chance to be alone in rooms where there was no one around. There was no one around. I'd be sitting there with. You know, a, a go again on the wall. I would touch it. I'd feel it. I got, I got, a, you know, I was like, I know, I like, this is go again. I feel you, dude. Uh, Toulouse Lautrec. Um, but I think there might actually have been a, a, a moral at my parents, sorry, my, my grandparents' cottage. It was never ours, it was always my, my grandparents. And they sold it, unfortunately. Unfortunately, what are you going to do? It's up near Algonquin Park, Lake of Bays, most beautiful place in the world. That's kind of all these places remind me of. That's why I love Tom Thompson so much is because canoe tripping, very big in my family. My dad, when he was young, used to be a canoe tripper. He took us on canoe trips and I loved it. I got great exposure to the great outdoors and that plays a big impact in my life. So when I'm doing these, I'm like, this is all about being up north and I don't I don't need to look at pictures. This like, you know what I mean? Like this is just sort of comes out. So this is kind of interesting the way the colors behind are, are showing up. I might just leave it leave it raw like that. I think that color is not nice. I need some orange. I guess that's why I was always like against anti art world because I didn't need people to tell me what was good, what was not good. I found that most of them were just were just failed artists themselves. Were bitter people. They didn't have any talent. So who are they to tell me what was good, what was not good? I already, I could feel it. I could feel it. It wasn't even. It wasn't even like a lesson. I think my mom had a huge part to play in it because she's a very good artist. And she turned me on to like Degas and Toulouse-Lautrec because she'd have books all the time and and uh, all around the house there were all these art books. And I used to just read through them, look at them, read about their stories. And I used to dream, imagine if you could be a... Uh, and it wasn't I didn't care about fame. I just wanted to make enough money so I could do this That was all that's always been my goal is I just like to be able to survive and just do this. That's it I don't care about I don't care about anything else Like I don't need a big house. I don't need a fancy car. I Just want to be able to not Stress about money Ironically I've worked my ass off for so many years and just uh just life okay so let's just uh what do you think of this oh shit they're looking at my stupid face let me let me turn this off there we go okay okay so let's just go in with a bit more blue shall we let's just go in with some more blue And make it feel good. I think it needs like different kinds of blue. I think that's that's what I'll do. I'll just.
That's some blue. That is some blue. Hey, Cindy, you missed Cheryl yabbering on about cruises again. She's going off on one of her insane babbling about cruise ships and nonsense earlier on. Hey, Cheryl. Oh, I love cruise ships. Watch it in the past. Blah, blah, blah. Hmm. Cruise ships. Okay. Not anymore. Like, I wonder. What color is this? Yeah, what the fuck was my grandmother thinking? We would have been gazillionaires, set for life. But then again, I probably would have become a lazy fuck. But that's not true. I, I'm, I'm probably, I'm an extreme workaholic. Extreme, extreme, extreme for sure. When I started working in video games, I, I couldn't help it. I, I loved work. I worked, uh, the first year I took 11 days off. I remember that specifically. That means including weekends. And that's what it took. To be able to start a video game studio, you had to work so incredibly hard. No, You know, you don't get paid because you're working for yourself. And have a great deal of luck. Oh boy. Such a difficult business to be in. Video games are extremely hit driven. So like most of the time you fail, 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 fail. And then you're lucky you might succeed. What do y'all think? We done here? Oh my God. If I could sell paintings like this, if I could sell a painting like this, can I tell you how happy I would be? this I love doing this this is fun 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 I, I don't know if it's good enough though that's the problem is I can't tell I can't let anything go unless it's it has to have a it has to have oh it has to be it has to have some mastery to it you know what I mean like I don't know if that has mastery to it. I don't want to just release something that's just... Anybody could do. I can tell you, that just just forgive me for all this blabbering. I'm doing it because I need to, because I've got the ringing is pretty fucking loud, and and it's I'm trying to distract myself. So just ignore the 
idiot bullshit that I'm talking about, please. Okay. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, that's interesting. This is kind of a... Oh, I know what I want to do. Let's do a line of, like, a really light color. I don't know, is it purple? Let's do a little bit of purple. Then we'll switch over to this... I don't know what that is. That's sort of like a... Okay, I'm going to go switch a bit more of a yellow over here. Go back to yellow over here. Maybe... Maybe crazy yellow. Wait. Or white. Let's try white. What would white do? It's kind of nice. I like the white. Let's get a little bit of a shoreline blue and a really fine brush for this. Fuck this up. I think I fucked this up big time. Yeah, fuck that. I don't like that blue at all. That blue is terrible. And it covers up a whole bunch of good stuff. I was looking on eBay to see if I could find one of the soaps and card by Dan. No, this was like that was uh 19 1990 is when I did it around then. So that would be funny, and I can even I can even try drawing the Dano again. It was the the D was very swirly. I think the name of the place was called Soapstone Creations. I think. Come on, you son of a bitch! Dang, I kind of fucked this up because now I got to go back over. What do you mean, bite me? I saw that Love Cruises had a balcony room, amazing. Wait, is that a different Cindy? Wait, is that the is that the usual Cindy? Is that everyday Cindy? Cindy Sands, did you change your, your picture? And Cheryl said, bite me. <laughs> That's the way I like it. That's the way I like it, that's funny. Bite me. <laughs> now we're talking. No one's being oversensitive or anything. Like that bullshit. Ooh, I kind of fucked this one up a bit, didn't I? Ooh. Yes, it is. It's my new wig. Oh, are you going through chemo? Like, did you lose what? your hair? Oh, nugget. I had a, a girlfriend who had breast cancer. I actually found the lump. And it was, we had actually were just in the process of breaking it up, but it was not a, it was not a, a bad breakup. It was, and I remember, uh, we had split up, but we were still very cared for each other a lot. We just knew, you know, it was meant to be. We, you know, you go for like two years and you sort of know it's whatever. And she's an awesome person. And I'm, and I remember I went and bought her a wig. I remember going to this wig place on Eglinton. It grew back horrible from chemo and thinning for my meds. I'm on. Looks horrible. Yeah, that sucks. Yeah. Well, if it makes any feel better. 
There you go. That makes you. F That's permanent. Look at that nice little bald spot. There. That make you feel better. We're on the same team. Yeah, but I understand. That's it's like such a blow to your ego too. But at some point, and I'm sure you're probably, you know, it doesn't even matter. It, that's you're live, right? That's that's the main thing. So many people I know have, like my mom, one of my uh, friends had a, just had a double mastectomy. Um, like she's only. She's like in her mid thirties and actually, Oh, I'm pretty sure my ex-girlfriend too had to have the mis double mastectomy too. I mean, this was a couple years after like, yeah, cancer sucks, man. Cancer killed so many people in my family. Everyone fucking, I'm going to die of cancer probably. Who knows? Yeah, but I didn't. Rec I'll have to look at your picture. I didn't. I didn't see. Okay, did you ever carve a business card holder? No. No, I didn't. Okay, you know what? I'm just gonna stop. This might be one of the ones that are just done. Like I just. That's it. How long did that take? Almost an hour. Fifty four minutes. But it was fun to do. Like this was fun. I might come back to it. I might leave it rough. But let's just. I'm gonna stop here. But um, I'm gonna go on the internet. Let's see if I can find Dano. No, I'll, if I do, if I do, I'll message it to you if I ever find it. But anyhow, the the it went like this. I mean, this is a long time, but I remember the D being big D and then A N O, like a little. Sh but it was D A N O, and the, the soapstones were typically a dark color, like uh, um, they were polished. So the writing, the writing was white. Like we were cutting, the negative space was a cutting. So, oh yeah, what did I carve? Oh, I remember, I remember there were Inuit dudes. Oh, I carved, some of the carvings were like Inuit people, like with the parkas on, with the little dash lines for the fur here. And I'm not kidding you, an igloo. Yep, we did an igloo. Whew. That's so funny. Okay, I'm going to take a break. I need to step back and look at this painting for a bit. And uh, hopefully it's still, it's a little bit dark. See, if I take a picture now, everything is going to look very blue shifted. I'm looking at the window and what time is it? It's four o'clock here in Toronto about, but the sun is like already going down. So if I take the picture, it'll be very blue. But uh, sometimes I'm impatient. I might just do it anyhow. I'll see if I can find one on eBay too, if that's where they actually live. Anyway, all right, I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.